to the channel and this is another decade uh, speed build that I'm doing for my decade build series and last week we did the art deco um, it's not really a mansion I guess a house but that was really exciting I love love art deco but this week I wanted to highlight another aspect of the 1930s which was the Great Depression and that was a very, very big deal. And I just wanted to do something a little different because up until now, I've just been doing houses. And yeah, so I thought it might be good to do an apartment building and just wanted to give you guys a heads up. I did not furnish um, the apartment building, so it's just basically an empty shell, but... It is on the gallery if you guys want to furnish it yourself. Um, it's just that, you know, trying to furnish four floors of a big building is a little taxing. But yeah, I didn't really have a lot of time this week because I did have some uh, medical things going on. So yeah, but nothing to worry about. Uh, just some testing and yeah, so I just did the shell. I think I might go back and furnish it later on because I'd really like to and that's something that I've always wanted to do is to make my own apartments because as we all know, the ones in San Maishuno are a little, a little limiting in a way, but just to be in line with the era I wanted to focus on the Great Depression, as I said before, so I ended up actually doing a little piece on the side of the apartments, and I also wanted to show you some pictures from that time. So this is a picture of a family, of a rural family, and times were very, very tough during this time, um, especially in rural areas and really everywhere in the U.S., the right picture is, I took heavy inspiration from that for this build, and these are some apartments in New York um, when the Great Depression hit. Uh, apartments were very popular um, or gained popularity because they weren't popular previous to the early 19th century in the US, even though they've been super popular in Europe for way longer. Basically, the Great Depression started in October of 1929 when the stock market crashed, and it was the deepest and longest lasting uh, downturn in the history of, in the Western world, really. In the US, the Great Depression basically sent Wall Street into a panic and it wiped out millions of investors. And over the next several years, consumer spending and investment dropped, uh, which in turn caused really steep declines in industrial output and rising levels of unemployment as failing companies laid off workers. By 1933, when the Great Depression reached its peak, some 13 to like 15 million Americans were unemployed and nearly half of the country's banks had failed. Though the relief and reform measures put into place by President Roosevelt helped lessen the brunt of it, the economy wouldn't really fully, fully turn around until after 1939. So that was a very, very long depression in the U.S., and when World War II uh, began in the 40s, it kicked America's industry into high gear, basically. <laughs> but anyway, despite assurances from President Herbert Hoover, who was the president before Roosevelt, and other leaders that 
the crisis would basically run its course and be better, things actually got a lot worse over the next three years. And by 1930, four million Americans looking for work could not find work. And that number rose to about six million in 1931. Meanwhile, the country's industrial production had dropped by half. Like, that is crazy to me. Bread lines, soup kitchens, and rising number of homeless people became more and more common in America's towns and cities. So it wasn't just the bigger towns, um, but it was more prevalent in bigger cities such as New York. So I took a lot of inspiration from apartments that are in New York that were either constructed during that time or were just around at the time. Also, in rural areas, farmers who had been struggling with their own depression for much of the 20s uh, due to drought and failing food, or I'm sorry, falling food prices, couldn't afford to harvest their crops and were forced to leave them rotting in the fields while people elsewhere starved, which is also crazy to me. Depression era hardships had fueled the rise of extremist political movements in various European countries, uh, most notably that of Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime in Germany. Uh, German aggression led war to break out in Europe in 1939, and the WPA turned its attention to strengthening the military infrastructure of the U.S., even as the country was neutral at that time uh, because I think that most people believe that war was imminent and I just, I can't believe going through, um, you know, this economic depression and then, you know, war being on the horizon. I couldn't imagine the stress these people were under and just the general sadness uh which is fitting for the name really because i don't know like i've gone through economic hardships myself but nothing like that and even when the u.s went through uh a recession i mean it was very very hard for so many people but not on this level i don't think so roosevelt he decided to support britain and france in the struggle against Germany and other Axis powers. So that boosted manufacturing and uh, provided more private sector jobs, which helped uh, Americans come out of the depression. But that wasn't until the late 30s. And um, in 1941 is when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, which led to a formal declaration of war uh, from the US and that really, really kicked the factories in the U.S. to be, like, in full production mode. That's the Great Depression, if you didn't really know about it too much. As far as the apartments go, the term apartment is actually an American invention. Um, they're called flats in other parts of the world. And, from, and also, Americans were actually slow to accept this style of multi-unit horizontal living because most people were more used to living in townhomes or uh, like separated housing. So this was very, very different for them. But in Europe, the Industrial Revolution in the early 19th century boosted the popularity of multifamily buildings, which offered a convenient and affordable, even fashionable housing for the urban middle and upper classes, and that was especially true in Paris and Vienna. Uh, in the 20s and 30s, when the majority of Americans were migrating and living in the cities, architects were designing apartments for a variety of family sizes, needs, and budgets, and that included uh, one room, quote, efficiency and, quote, bachelor apartments, <laughs> uh, walk-up apartments, apartments with elevators and apartment hotels, uh, residential hotels sometimes offered meals for long-term tenants, 
which was an adaptation of London's catering flats. So yeah, that's kind of what that all is about. So at this point, I was working on the outdoor housing that was outside. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that can cover um, like a little outdoor area besides making an actual roof, which I didn't want to do. I did try to kind of make um, a roof covering with using rugs. Like I thought maybe a tarp would be appropriate. I just kind of used some random objects that maybe these people found and just tried to make like an enclosure of objects that people might find and, you know, using some gas lamps just so that there's a little bit of light. A lot of people who were homeless at this time weren't homeless previous to this time, so they did have some things with them. They were just uh, not in a house or in a home. So I added a bed and I added a uh, barbecue grill and a little dining area. So there's two beds here and actually if you're doing like rags to riches or something like that, this might be kind of a cool build to start out at. I noticed in some pictures uh, that I found online that there was kind of like corner apartments in a way. So that's kind of the idea that I wanted to go with for this build. And so outlining the build is in my mind street. And then on the sides of the build, I'd have uh, cars. I don't think I ended up putting in the cars, but I also ended up taking out that rug that's under the bed because I didn't think, you know, <laughs> people would have a rug. Um, so I replaced that with the cardboard um, floor. I think it's considered a rug technically, but it looks like cardboard. Yeah, there it is. But yeah, so I added some skill building items as well in uh, this part of the build just because I thought, you know, even though they are homeless, they need some way to make money. So I added an easel and um, I think I added something else. I thought, you know, focusing on making the side of the building look accurate to people who are um, just trying to make it through uh, would be really appropriate for this time period and this build. Everything here is functional and as I said before, the inside is just empty and I added uh, floor plans off camera. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm excited for uh, next week because we're going to be going into the 40s, uh, World War II era, but yeah. I think we're almost done with the build. I'm just going to be adding some some clutter objects here because I thought it might be funny to <laughs> have like um, a work area. So I added a hole into the pavement there. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for all the support and all the lovely comments you've been leaving on my previous videos. I try to reply to every one of them and uh, yeah, I just, I really appreciate it and I just love you guys. Thank you for feeding my inner history nerd <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. Bye! They used to tell me I was building a dream And so I followed the mob When there was earth to plow or guns to bear I was always there right on the job They used to tell me I was building a dream With peace and glory ahead why should I be standing in line 
just waiting for bread. Once I built a railroad, I made it run, made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower up to the sun, brick and rivet and lime. Once I built a tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once in khaki suits, gee, we look swell. Full of that Yankee doodly dum Half a million boots went slogging through hell, and I was the kid with the drum. Say, don't you remember? They called me Al. It was Al.